Welcome to the Rapport Advantage Podcast, transforming the way leaders communicate. Here's your host, Alex Swire Clark. to the show welcome to the show thank you johnny hey there thank you for that johnny uh intro there our voiceover specialist welcome to the rapport advantage podcast we're glad to have you guys with us if you haven't listened to our podcast before we've got three primary goals uh, each and every show number one we want to help you maximize who you are and your organization's potential we want to help you build and develop more effective relationships in the workplace and beyond and then number three we want you to Uh, be able to create connections and communicate more effectively in your organization and in your life in general. So I'm Alex Swire-Clark. I am a CEO, speaker, and certified human behavior expert. And I am Liz Parker. I'm a certified behavior analyst, strategic growth consultant, and a job benchmarking whiz. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. (laughs) <laughs> uh, and as I said, in this uh, episode, we're going to cover those three main goals, but specifically on, on today's show, uh, our topic is going to be discussing a brief history of DISC and why it's important to know and begin to build our DISC language. Uh, our last episode, we talked about um, that there are so many different types of personality assessments and uh, human behavior models. Uh, you've got Myers-Briggs, you've got um, you know all kinds of different ones. We've just found that DISC works well for us, and uh, that's one we're going to be using uh, throughout our podcast to uh, help you increase your emotional intelligence and uh, to build those uh, better relationships. So, in this particular segment, uh, Liz, we're going to talk about our disc thought of the day. So, uh, yes. what is our this thought is of the day? This is my favorite part because what we're going to be able to do is actually think about these people and think about the thoughts for the day. So, the disc thought for the day, everyone is a unique blend of all four personality styles. You might be asking yourself, well, what's a personality style? Hey, Liz. Hey, Liz. What's a personality style? <laughs> Very good, Alex. Well, we're going to let you in on that little secret by the end of the show. Oh, what? I don't get it right now. Come on, Microwave Society. I want it now. Now, give it to me. Give it to me. I want you learning. I want you listening. So during the shows, what I want you to understand is we're going to use terms, um, behavioral style and personality style interchangeably. They mean the same thing throughout the show, but I just want you to be clear on that. Okay. Okay. So we will use those interchangeably. Um, Liz and I have been trained in DISC and we were trained by two different groups. Uh, And so we share the same methodology, but sometimes we use terms a little bit uniquely. I'm more of a personality style guy and uh, Liz uses behavioral style a little more often than I will. But again, they're synonymous. They'll they'll be the same. So, um, And the power of that is that we still learn the same information. So it doesn't matter where you're learning it. The fact is, you know the information and that's key. That is correct. That is correct. So we're going to go into the Wayback Machine here to start our brief history of discs. So hang on. Here we go. In a world of dinosaurs. Oh, wait a minute. We're not going back that far. Okay. <laughs> okay let's go up Thank a few you, million Alex. years. Let's go, let's go back to like uh, 400 BC, Liz. What do you think? Let me tell you, 400 BC, Hippocrates was actually the one that started the origins of disc. And I'm telling you, I love the sound effects for this because it does get a little dry. However, if we look at 1921, Carl Jung is actually the one that um, was the Swiss psychologist and psychoanalyst that published psychological types. He actually hypothesized that there were four psychological functions. Basically, we move up a little bit further. William Moulton Marston, back in 1928, for those of you that are history buffs, he published a book, Emotions of Normal People. He described that four personality style theory was the basis that we actually use today. So feel free to look up the chapters online, see more details on the research for those of you that are those high C lovers who really want to know more about the research. We've learned from the history, though, that the DISC language is based on that observable behavior that we were talking about, what people do, how they move, how they talk, what they what they look like. That's why we sometimes mix the terms behavioral style and personality style. And So, so for- Alex... I was going to say, for those of us who are high I or the inspiring type that are not detail oriented and managed to get through that particular segment, (laughs) (laughs) we made it. We made it. It wasn't evil after all. We we learned a little something. So, and we didn't fall off the railroad tracks. That would have been bad. So, we made it. Good job, Liz. Good job. Uh, You made that that dry stuff entertaining. That was really good. Um, So, 
for our cautious types, so our, our calculating types, our, our high Cs, you'll learn about what those are a little bit later. Um, they're always asking the question, why? Why do we do this? Why am I doing this? You know, what's the point? You know, that kind of thing. So um, the answer to that question, why, is the bottom line, this stuff will improve your life. Period. End of story. Um, that's just the, the way that it is. The the higher your in emotional intelligence, the better you're going to be able to relate to people, the better relationships you're going to have, the more effective communicator you're going to be, and life in general will just be that much better. I mean, That's right. Period. It, definitely. And I just as a side note, even though Marston was kind of that boring guy, I just want to kind of add a little life to him. If any of you saw that Wonder Woman movie that was out, he's actually the guy that created that. So not only can he do the psychological stuff, but he does the fun stuff as well. Shut up. Really? It is true. There is no way. Some psychoanalyst dude is the creator of Wonder Woman? It is true. Dang. I like that now. <laughs> we learn something every day. Sometimes more than once a day. All right. So, uh, but th- this is a, a business podcast, uh, just uh, so we know we're in the business section under iTunes. Um, but the concepts we're going to be talking about, Liz, and, and you and I n- both know this, is that it, it relates to how we communicate with everyone, not just in the workplace, not when we're just trying to make a sale, but that's right. You know, with our relationships with our parents, uh, relationships with our kids, coworkers, friends, folks at church, that, that kind of thing. Uh, and in an, up, in an upcoming podcast, we're going to share some, some personal sides of things, and, and, and we're going to get a little bit brave here uh, and, and try to share some, some uh, personal things and why this information is so important. Um, uh, my wife and I um, were having some uh, early marital struggles, and this information was hugely enlightening for us and really changed the course of our marriage, now, been, now having been married for 22 years. And we've never yeah, had- it would have been helpful in my first marriage. <laughs> well, that's because you didn't get started with it soon enough. But anyway, we'll get there. Anyway. So, twenty-two years, and we've you know, and my wife and I have never had a fight. Okay, <laughs> we've only had two fights. Okay, well, maybe I've had quite a few fights, but uh, yeah. Oh, Alex. <laughs> yes, yes, we've had quite a few fights, but we've survived. We're getting there. We're getting there. So, uh, but this this information will completely transform the way that that you think about um, communicating with folks, and it's just it's just very very powerful. And as Liz said, there are four different styles, and knowing that there are four styles, we need to know which style people have so that we can adapt our communication so that they can receive our you know our communication that much better, and then themselves they can be heard. Uh, and then they can be uh, better understood. And that's what it's all about. Because as we know, communication is a two-way street. We can't just that's right. spew, 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 and then expect people to hear us and then just kind of close ourselves off as we think about the next point we're trying to make without listening to them effectively. So when it comes to understanding human behavior, there is no winner or loser. Um, each personality style has its strengths, and it also has its blind spots. Uh, and, and in these podcasts, we're going to help you navigate those blind spots and, and build on those strengths. I think, and you know, Liz, you can speak to this, that a lot of times we can present this information and then we give folks practical applications, but then they don't use them. And so the information just kind of wastes away in organizations. That's right. You got to be able to use it right away and be able to to integrate it into your system because the ability to adapt your behavior to each of the styles is going to increase the effectiveness of everybody's communication. And it allows for that greater understanding and appreciation of those similarities and differences. And we have a few of those, Alex. Uh, just a few. <laughs> um, and in this, in this day and age of workplace conflict, workplace violence, um, a lot of that stuff can be, be prevented by, by just understanding the way that someone else thinks and feels and yeah. communicates and then being being able to reach them at that level, and then that person feels like, hey, this person gets me. Yep. This person understands who I am. I've got a sense of belonging here, and that's what we're trying to create. Exactly. So the ability to adapt our behavior to each of the styles will increase our effectiveness in our communication. It'll allow for a greater understanding and appreciation of those similarities and differences. And we're going to get into the the who the ins and outs of of who Liz and I are during this this podcast. And we welcome you to share your insights in terms of who you are, who you think you are. And of course, if you don't know who you are, you're always welcome to take an assessment. Um, and we can talk about that a little bit later uh, in terms of how you can get in touch with us to, to do that. But And they're going to know more about us than they ever want to know. Uh, well, that's just, <laughs> but that's good. We're fun people, right? I mean, you know. we are fun yes. people. Yes. yes, we are fun. So anyway, 
<laughs> we're gonna have fun. That's the way. We, that's the way it works. We got. We got to do that. So we're gonna help you master these these three for fundamental concepts to effectively improve your communication and relationship skills. And those fundamental concepts are number one. First, understand yourself. If you don't know who you are, you can't go out and try to interpret anybody else or try to get a read on somebody. So know who you are and where you come from, where you speak from, where your heart is. Number two, right. understand others. Um, you've got to be able to read people effectively and use your disc powers for good. You'll hear us talk about that a lot. Um, and I'm a Star Wars guy, sorry. So use the force in the positive way. Always search for the light. Never go to the dark side of the hole. Um, because then, then you get into the, the line of manipulation, and we never want to be in a manipulative um, habit or environment when we're working with other folks. And number three, you, we're going to, um, the fundamental concept is to adapt your style to the styles of others to better communicate and build relationships. Because after all, we're going to have the knowledge, they might not. And so it's our responsibility. Um, because we have that knowledge to be able to adapt and share because we can't rely on them to do that. Um, and as you know, uh, Peter Parker, uh, uncle, uncle Ben said, um, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. So, um, I yeah. better get to the movies. Oh uh, yeah. You got, I mean, yeah, you're, you're missing a lot of my, my cultural icons. And of course I just lost half the audience cause like Spider-Man, I'm proud of that is. So anyway, that's, that's old school <laughs> Tobey Maguire, uh, Spider-Man. That's like what, two generations ago. Two anyway. All right, well, enough of that. So what are these four styles we keep chirping about? Um, we're going to dive into those. And again, we've got four primarily, primary styles, Ds, Is, Ss, and Cs, hence the DISC model. And so Liz is going to talk to us about that high D or dominant style. So hit it, Liz. That's right. And I'm going to be brief in this because I want us to make sure that we get the overview first because we will dive deeper into each one of these styles in future episodes. But let me just start. D stands for dominant style. Um, they are the outgoing, task-oriented people. They can be also those entrepreneurs that are out there, those guys that have those first thoughts that come to mind, they action it immediately. So anybody that you see along that line could be that kind of a high D style. Now, not all entrepreneurs are high Ds, though, so keep that in mind, too. You can be successful being other styles. If you think through kind of people in the world, people like Judge Judy, George Patton, those would be two people that we could reference, and we will be referencing in future episodes to give you an idea of who those high Ds could be. Alex, why don't you tell us a little bit about the high eyes? The high eyes, I'm, I'm actually a high eye myself. Liz, I, I know that you, Me got, too. you got a little bit of high eye over there as well on your side. Um, but these are the inspiring style. Uh, these are your outgoing, again, outgoing people like the Ds, but we're more people-oriented than than task-oriented. That means that we're energized by large groups of people versus, you know, let me make a list of things to do. Uh, that's, that's not my thing. I, I want to be around people and kind of doing the party thing. Eyes like to do that. Um, these folks love being in front of a crowd, whereas you know, majority of the population, you you ask them, what is your greatest fear? And it's, I don't want to speak in front of people. That whole public speaking thing, man, give eyes, a microphone, and some people to, to listen. And we're happy as pigs in slop. I mean, we are just, <laughs> we are just rolling. I mean, just give it to us. I mean, it's, I will take on the world and speak to 50,000 people. That's what we do. Um, we love that kind of stuff. Uh, these are people like uh, Robin Williams, like Oprah, um, those folks who, you know, have never met a stranger, always out in front of folks, always trying to inspire, you know, influence others. And, and, and most times they're, they're doing that in a positive way. Robin Williams is, uh, is just a tremendous, he was a tremendous um, actor, comedian. Yeah. If you've never seen um, his uh, uh, Inside the Actor Studio uh, segment uh, that, that he did, um, he just went into a total improvisation for about 10 straight minutes using a, nothing but a scarf. Uh, from a lady in the audience, it's fantastic. I highly recommend you, you go see that if you want to see what a just what a tremendously talented individual he was in terms of entertaining others and 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 making other people laugh and making the world a better place as a result of that. So he he was awesome. Um, and so we we love our high eyes, and I'm a high eyes. So that's that's kind of kind of my. And we my love heart. to talk about ourselves, which is kind of what no, we like to do. stop it. Come on, okay, maybe just a little bit. Just okay. <laughs> well. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. So, um, uh, so our next style is, are our S's, the the lifeblood of any organization. And uh, Liz is going to tell you about that. Uh, those yeah. high, uh, supportive style. 
Those high S's, I'm married to one of those, and they, they are extremely supportive. They're very stable. They're those more reserved and people-oriented people. They like people more one-on-one than in a large group. Um, they are the people that are the glue in the organization. They're loyal. They are full of teamwork. Um, you get one of these people, and they'll stick with you forever. These are people kind of like Andy Griffith, if you think about him and how he held that town of Mayberry together, and Mother Teresa. She was out there serving others all the time, being sure that she was the support of, of the whole community. So these high ISs are extremely, they're like lassies. You know, you think about it, they are those people that will come back to you time and time again. But let's not dwell on them forever. Alex, take it over with who the C's are. I, I do love the S's though. They're, 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 they're so good. You do have that in you as I well. I have a little S in me. I'm, I'm a fiercely <laughs> loyal guy. Um, you are. But yes, our high C's, I am married to a high C. They are the compliant style. Um, they are your reserved and task oriented people. So don't want to be in front of a crowd. Don't want to you know, necessarily be around a lot of people to get energy. But man, you give them a list of 23 things to do. They will put it in order from most important to least important. They'll put it in terms of what should I do before coffee and after coffee. And then they'll talk about how to put, you know, the stuff in the spreadsheet and all that kind of stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, oh, dear Lord, just shoot me now. <laughs> you know, I cannot deal with that spreadsheets. I mean, just shut up, shut up, shut up. Shut up. I don't even want to hear it. The only pivot table, forget it, you know. No, thank you. But C's, we love you because you are the order in the sea of chaos. You guys love rules. You keep us all from plunging into the darkness of our insanity. You are always the measure twice, cut once, and you try to grab that piece of wood before a high eye gets a hold of it because you know we're going to destroy it. So thank you for you guys. You, You guys are the folks like Madame Curie. Sherlock Holmes, those people who are those high-level thinkers, big-picture thinkers, um, really focus on the the details and the the reasons why we do things, and just you know the brains behind this whole thing. Uh, you guys, are the C's. Yeah, and don't forget, Alex, that everybody is a combination of all these styles because you can adapt and be any one of these styles when necessary. Just takes you a little more energy to do that. So remember, everyone's a unique blend. And the goal of what we're trying to do today is just give you that brief overview of what each style is so that we can talk about each of the the specific styles on future episodes. So we're going to start with that high D dominant style and really go into a deep dive on that. Don't miss these episodes because this is going to be fabulous, fun stuff. Yes, yeah, this, this is the meat and potatoes of, of the core foundational knowledge of what it's all about. And, and like Liz said, we're all a unique blend. I do have some C in me. It's like four on a scale of 100. I have a six. So it's, it's teeny, teeny, tiny. But but we, we still have that a little bit of that, uh, all of us in, uh, in us. And so you'll find out as we get through this that you might be uh, what we call a multi-blended dominant style. So you might be a, a high inspiring and a high dominant style. Some people are that and some people are three. Um, and so some people are a single one. So, but they still have those other characteristics. And as, as, uh, as Liz said, um, the goal of the discussion was to kind of give you a brief overview today, not necessarily to, to dive deeper, which is where we're, where we're going next week. So, um, as you said, next week is going to be D's, uh, but for today, that's going to do it for our show. I'd like to thank Liz Parker for joining me today. Liz, how can folks get in touch with you? Well, please find me on my website at ltresults.com. Awesome. Awesome. And to get in touch with uh, me, you can uh, visit us at therapportadvantage.com, therapportadvantage.com. Our Facebook page is The Rapport Advantage. You can follow us and, and the show on Twitter at Rapport Podcast. Uh, and Liz and I are both on LinkedIn, so look for us there. Uh, we certainly appreciate you spending time with us today. We know your time is valuable, whether you're commuting or you're listening to us uh, in the restroom or in the... <laughs> In the subway or wherever you happen to be, we really appreciate your time. Um, and if we you uh, if you like what you're hearing so far, uh, please leave us a review on iTunes. Uh, tell us what you would uh, would like about the show, things we can improve, and most importantly, topics that you want us to cover in future episodes. Um, mm-hmm. Like maybe how do I you know build rapport when I'm meeting a client for the first time, or can I get a read on people through emails? And the answer to those questions are yes, we can help you with that, and yes, you can. So we're going to cover those um, in future episodes, but. Again, the high Ds, our dominant styles, are next week. Who are they and what they're all about? So on behalf of Liz Parker, uh, this is Alex Swire-Clark saying thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. 
Thanks for listening to the Rapport Advantage podcast. We'd love to hear from you. Join the conversation on Facebook at the Rapport Advantage and follow us on Twitter at Rapport Podcast.